Previously on Sailing Adrift. All right, everything is reinstalled, the new fuse is in. I need you to cross everything you got. On top of being stuck in Eureka, California, due to inclement weather, we lost our steering and then promptly experienced a series of unfortunate events within our engine room. But today, we're feeling pretty good about it all. Today we are getting out of our slip in preparation for departure tomorrow. One word of note on this marina, at low tide it is shallow, like only four feet deep in our slip at low tide. And our draft, or the depth below the waterline, is about six feet. So it would really suck to be stuck again. It's a little low right here, so we're just moving to another slip so we have the flexibility of leaving whenever we want in the morning. So we're just doing a little spin ski here, and then we're gonna dock over and drop the leg. Should be pretty easy, famous last words. Just gonna dock right over there next to high seas. Man, I swear to God, like, no matter what you're doing, I would say, hands down, the most stressful thing you could do is try to dock a boat, even in these conditions. I must say, after our little bumper boat action at the fuel dock last week, we were both a little on edge. However, this morning, we nailed it. Success! Are we ready? Just about. Just gonna boot up the uh, navigation stuff, make sure it's all working. Pi pilot, uh, autopilot is going. Good, good. We're gonna drop off the keys to this place and then yep. we're ready to get out of here. It okay. is right now, 7.18 a.m. Yes. I was hoping to cross the bar before eight. It's still possible, but we're kind of pushing it. I hustle over to drop off our gate key. This better be the real deal this time. And today's the day. As long as all systems are a go, knock on wood. We're going to leave Eureka and head south. We might make the big run all the way down to Southern California past Point Conception. That is the main plan. And then we have a couple of contingencies should something go awry or the weather change or something along those lines. But first, time to take our drugs. This is generic Zolfran. We used it on the way down, worked for me. Uh, Kelly had mixed results. But she's elected to try this again over the patch. We should, again. I'm really hyper concerned because of the amount of false starts and problems we've had that are just goofy. But we should uh, have fairly nice seas all the way down. We'll find out when we get out there. All right, fire it up. Yep, we're all activated, here we go. Like a champ. Alright, should we go? Yeah, let's do this. Alright. No. No, I don't! It's all stuck. Hold on the other end. Okay, we're clear. Phew, that was a little much. Now just securing our deck ornaments for the next 600 miles. And we're off. Even though we knew this next leg was going to be the longest, I can't really explain how happy we both were to finally be doing it. Passing through these buoys was almost like crossing a finish line. And yes, in case you're wondering, just to be safe... I did call the Coast Guard earlier this morning and confirm there are no restrictions on the bar. So in theory, we should be looking good, as we've got a great weather window for the next five days. The thing about doing anything on a sailboat that's a little taxing is it's like pulling teeth. And now I can figure out when we came into this, pitch black, saw nothing. And we just had to like line up two green lights. And I felt like it took forever and we were going 10 knots. And uh, I can see why it's got a pretty big darn mouth here. This seems fairly smooth so far, knock on wood. I do a lot of that these days. And it just, just takes forever. Right now we're going 5.6 knots because the we're on a flood tide, so it's come against us. Uh, and we're just trying to get out past all this fun. We'll see what the open ocean is like. We're getting close. We're about even with the mouth. Whoa, this fun. Zoom the stance.
Kelly's trying to stave off seasickness and I'm not helping with these waves. Right, Kelly? My hair pulls back to the cave. <laughs> and her bucket is just below her. Yep. Status update. She didn't make it. Well, looks like Chris is taking the first shift. This might be a longer ride than we had anticipated. We have passed Pavement Decino, but I'm sure we're still experiencing the uh, influence of it. We're actually cruising pretty good. There must be a pretty darn good current right now because we're sailing or like we're moving in the seven to eight knot range, which is pretty damn fast. We usually go about six and a half to seven knots. Nothing exciting to report. Seas have settled down quite a bit. So is my stomach. Good. You mind if I go take a bit of a nap for a little while? Okay. All right. Holler for any reason. Okay. We each took a few shift changes at three hours a piece. That is a big tanker ship or cargo ship. And I swear, I've been trying to dodge it for the last two hours and it is moving in front of me on purpose. Well, there it is on radar. We should miss it, but I mean, man, I might be able to lean out and kiss the crew. Then it was my watch, which I spent making TikToks until I was rudely interrupted by the Coast Guard. United States Coast Guard Cutter, Polar Star. Seven o'clock on your starboard bow, channel one six over. <laughs> For some weird reason, our radio wasn't transmitting, so I woke Chris up. I see you, uh, we were in a head-on situation earlier. I altered my course of the port, uh, request a starboard, a starboard, with a CPA of, uh, no less than one nautical mile. I'll, I'll copy over. As we say, I'll see you the starboard, starboard, and, uh, you have a pleasant voyage. To starboard, to starboard. Yeah, that's what we're doing, right? Yeah. Okay. And he doesn't want to be any closer to us than a nautical mile, so we're going to just, just to accommodate that. In the simplicity of a few clicks, we adjusted our course. Thanks, babe. Yeah. There it is. There's the Coast Guard. Yep, this tiny little dot right here. Waking up to a beautiful sunrise, this was definitely something to look forward to. Because the majority of the trip looked a lot like this throughout our days. It wasn't all smooth from here, we got our fair share of action along the way. We set up the nest in the pilot house, and set 15 minute interval timers to pop up and check the horizon. We also periodically check the engine, our alternator, and new sea strainer for anything suspicious. All looks well. Day two. Yes, I'm only going this much crazy so far. What's your crazy? Just like, uh, in general. The, you seeing stuff? No, just being like, uh, no, not yet. That's, that comes next. Oh. All right, tonight. Where's your volleyball? I don't know. Uh, we have been motoring exclusively this entire trip down the coast. And the reason we decided to do that, I'd love to sail, but the, the wind right now is directly on our nose. And I'd like to get there more than I'd like to sail. Me too. Uh, we will put the sails up yep. as soon as we hit SoCal and South. Sounds like a plan. All right, good. In the meantime... This will soon have something in it. I haven't decided what. I hope it stays in there. Yeah, and me too. It way into our mouth. <laughs> we have not eaten much. No. It is day two. It's 9.30 in the morning. And we are approaching San Francisco area. Yeah, it's right over there. Can you see it? Me neither. <laughs> Sun's out. It was warm, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's our heater. Conditions are good. Yeah, good, not great, I would say. I think morale will be a little higher once we've eaten some. Yeah, sounds good. Let's get to cooking. Meatballs, breakfast of champions. I, I just get tired of little snack foods. I need something with substance. Yeah. I bet you there's still going to be a little bit of cold spots, but they should be relatively cooked through. They're pre-cooked, so it won't hurt us. 
We leisurely ate our meatballs and then noticed something super annoying that we couldn't really do anything about. Chris, you sprung a leak. Several. I think we need to reseal these windows up here. They're dripping on the bed and on the floor and on the table and on the couch. It's starting to look like a homeless camp. Yeah, pretty bad. Putting me. <laughs> Time for another shift change. I just got up from a bit of a nap here in the middle of the day. We've been approaching San Francisco, California for 16 days now. We're almost there. Yeah, we're not stopping there. We're gonna go right by. We won't even get to see it. We're so far out to sea. This whole mission of just getting south, perfect illustration with the, the spray leaks that were on our bed. And now if you look into our head, the uh, shower head fell down creating a puddle of the residual water within the line. And then it gets dirty and you just kind of live with it until you get to a place where you can deal with it. This is not something Kelly would ever let fly in her house. So I just put my shoes on before I come in here. You don't need to see the rest. Literally nothing exciting to report for night number two, just how we like it. Welcome to day three. Day three? <laughs> yeah. We get rougher and rougher. Yeah. We are all wet. The boat is showing us all its leaks. Mostly it's around the seam of the pilot house. But there's some nice salty waters coming in in a lot of different spots. It's just because we're bashing into waves and it's throwing it up on the pilot house and coming in. No bueno. Now that we're both up, time for some breakfast. Cooking is like a, an extreme sport. All right, there we go. Mystery sausage fried rice. It smells delicious. I kept it simple for your stomach because Kelly didn't eat much dinner last night because it was too strong for flavor. That fried rice definitely hit the spot. Something about hot meals in these conditions that just make everything a little better. 1600 hours. We're handing over the ship change. Basically, Kelly and I just pick different spots to lay down at this point. Yep. It's getting a little better for our sea condition. No more wall, 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 wall that we were experiencing a few hours ago but we're still rocking and rolling. So laying down is the easiest way to take that on. So what do you say, babe? Yeah, that is easy. Right now the wind is still on our like uh, starboard very front. We couldn't sail if we wanted to, but over the next hour or so, the wind's supposed to swing around to more of a beam reach. So we'll see if that happens. Kelly's taking over for three hours. Pow, pow, pow! Right on your face. <laughs> this is our little uh, sea berth here. It works pretty great. Kelly's up there eating some cereal. I'm down here getting cozy, ready to sleep. Day three is better. Yeah. Day three is much better. Even though the sea state earlier was probably among the worst we've had, if you exclude the Crescent City to Eureka trip, it's still like you kind of do find your rhythm. Hello. Hi. It's time to take our pill. Number 153. Cheers. In addition to the superpowers these pills provide, they come with the side effect of extreme drowsiness. We were finally starting to find our rhythm, but the ocean salt spit and gray skies were getting pretty old. We're getting these big old swells behind us that are pushing us along. It's actually kind of cool at present, nothing wild going on, but we're, I'm like seeing speeds up to nine knots. 
So as long as this keeps up, we're scooting right along, but uh, hopefully the swell doesn't increase because that would just be annoying. Then it starts pushing your boat one way or the other and really causing a problem. But that's it. We just been like, I'm sorry for the lack of uh, showing you what's going on. We've just been hunkering down, man. There's not much excitement going on, but we're going to make it. Knock on wood. Everything's going well. We ate some dinner and then went back to our sleep watch schedule. Until Chris woke me up for something rather unexpected. Chris noticed our fuel gauge was getting low, at a pretty rapid rate, which was concerning because we were still quite a ways out. So Chris went on deck to tap into our jerry can supply for a quick fill on the go. He then started siphoning over the fuel. This was all really weird because the gauge was dropping pretty radically. Chris checked the engine room to see if there was some kind of leak. Good news, there's no leak. But where is all this diesel going? See, so yeah, it says 14 gallons. Yeah. It said 0.5 when we started, and we haven't even put in two 10 gallon jerry jugs, or five gallon jerry jugs, so oh. the bottom of the tank's calibration is off. Well, that solves that mystery. I woke you up. You're in a deep slumber. I was, but I can go back to sleep. I can't. Smile. So, things to note. The bottom of our fuel tanks are liars. We gotta be mindful of that. The liars in a good way. Liars in a positive way in that there's more fuel in there than it says there is. Also, so far we're rounding Cape Conception and we're getting to the point where it should be kind of the wildest, but as predicted, it's freaking calm, man. I, I don't think we've had seas this nice yet. So that's a uh, bit of news for Southern California. Chris then put the empty jerry cans back on deck. And I proceeded to watch him like a hawk, so if he somehow went overboard, I'd be able to react. Great success. We did it. Everything went well. All right, I'm just polishing the last little bit over so that you put us at 30 gallons, which is enough to motor for one day, one 24-hour period. Cool. That's all we need. Yep. Assuming our gauges don't lie to us. <laughs> Excellent news update. Yes. We found out that once our gas tanks say they're on empty, there's about 10 gallons of fuel left in there. And it was throwing off my numbers this whole time because I polished everything from this side, put it over to this side, and then I just let it kind of hang out there. And I think it's because the way our tanks are shaped, they like have a bottom like this. So your dipstick can only go down to this bottom and it leaves all this reserve hanging over here in these. Anyway, long story short, extra 10 gallons of fuel in our 75 gallons tank once they show E, which means we're not burning 1.45 uh gallons an hour we're burning burning one and a third and we had an extra 10 gallons so we now have 40 gallons left in the tank so we can get clear to our destination of alamitos easily on the fuel that we have foggy with the sun right in my face makes it hard to see there's actually a boat out here somewhere too Luckily, it's on the radar, kind of. Kelly's still asleep, but when she gets up, we're gonna put the sails on. First time. After rounding Point Conception in the wee hours of the morning with the sunrise, we were officially in Southern California and in the middle of a ton of fog. There, the fog's burning off, and now we can see land for the first time in how many days? Three? Three. Yep. We have about 18 hours left on our transit. After a little bit here, we're gonna get out and put the sails up. 
Okay, it's finally that time. We're getting the sails up. First, we hoisted the mainsail. Then, it was time to get the headsail out and deal with our pesky spinnaker pole. And, after all that, almost feels like we're going backwards. How fast really? are we going? Four knots. Oh, really? A little less. Huh. Question is, you can go back to motoring and get there, or do you want to hang out and do this for a while? What's the advantage to hanging out and doing this? Well, then we're not arriving at one o'clock in the morning. In hindsight, the smarter play would have been to continue sailing. But that requires something called patience. Chris's hat will now join the sea gods, along with our old GoPro. Are we ready? Uh, I think so. I gotta start the boat. After four hours of coasting along with the wind, we were both just ready to get there. Sunshine. This feels, feels like an event. We're, 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 we're out in the sunshine. The sun is shining. We are uh, in comfortable seas. Point conception behind me. And here we are, we're in Southern California. Pretty happy right now. This is so much better than the last three days. And I'm so glad that we decided to tackle this all at once. It was a slog for sure. Like just basically passing shifts, laying on the cabin floor while the whole boat rocks, nothing comfortable. But today, it's all looking better. Much better. Welcome to day four, Hi. SoCal. We're here. We need some sunscreen. Yeah, this weather was a total game changer, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Obviously, not a whole lot of wind for sailing, but the sun felt absolutely incredible. Hey guys. What? Want to go back to Eureka? No. How much money would it take for us to turn around right now without getting to stop here to go back to Eureka? With magic full of the old thing. 50 grand. because your bottom sore for sitting for four, four full days. Yeah, well, it's sitting around. It is. Well, I'm laying around too. At least now we could comfortably sit outside, among other things. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I think I'm a fishing spot, Kelly. Yeah. I'm drinking the Perrier water. I'm high class, high society. Yes, indeed. I'm gonna sit right here. I'm gonna lay out my hand lines when it's legal, because it's not right here. And we're gonna catch us a wahoo. This is nice. This is very nice. Oh, I am yeah, enjoying like, myself. I didn't expect it to like, kind of hit me that we're kind of like, this is why we did all this stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, it feels great. But I'm literally out here in my underoos and a t-shirt, yep. enjoying myself. There's boats going everywhere around these two of the Channel Islands back there. You still can't see those arches. The next set will be over here and we'll see some Island and then Catalina Island. Malibu, which is coming up over here. I guess you can kind of see it. I see some mountains. I see that there's land there, yeah. 
Kelly and I are planning the next couple of legs. They'll be a lot shorter than this one. This one has been a journey. Yes. Eureka, California, all the way down the coast in four days. And we're gonna go all the way into uh, Los Alamitos, which is right outside of Long Beach. We have a slip reserved and it's supposed to be a very friendly area for getting groceries and all sorts of things. So we're gonna be there for two nights. We got a plan. Yeah, do you feel like you're, you're accomplished now that you're in the middle of... Uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm celebrating too soon. We still have nine hours to go to get there. Yeah. But we are in the single digits. But nine hours seems like nothing. Anything else to report, dear? Okay, Live from the, the uh, Channel Islands in Southern California. Yeah, we're in SoCal. Very gratifying to be here. Chris even took his pants off. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get these dogs some sun. Chris then prepared us a broccoli steak dish, and we fell into our watch pattern again, this time enjoying a lovely sunset on the way down. well lit which is good because uh, it's gonna be one o'clock in the morning when we get into this marina we're coming on to the Long Beach Harbor which is a pretty damn busy place obviously and there's a bunch of tankers anchored out we have to dodge but they're about a mile apart so I should be able to hit those gaps and then we get into the entrance into the harbor or the marina that's a little bit more difficult, so we'll do what we can, but uh, it's probably be easier during the day. This is the second time we've come into a harbor at night, at least we don't have to cross a bar in this one. You're just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen because I'm about an hour away from the action, which is six miles, not very much. I can see all of the action. I just gotta wait an hour until I'm there. Kelly is on standby. Yeah, that's her phone glowing. She's just relaxing, trying to stay out of the way. She'll pop up and help though. She's on dock lines and fenders and probably being a good lookout. Mondingus is also gonna be a lookout. He refuses to face forward. He's a little petulant. We're weaving our way through four big tankers headed towards the big break wall here at Long Beach. And then we'll just putter across that and go into the mouth of this, this bay. This little cattle shoot. Alameda here. Bay, yeah. Anyway, well, that's fun. Of course, this wall is more illuminated or whatever the hell it is. I, I can see the drawing and I get a rough idea now that we've got lights and stuff. Okay, it looks quite pleasant. Yeah, it's very cute. <laughs> Why do we do this to ourselves? I don't know, this was dumb. <laughs> it was. I was worried about the docking part of it, not even the Well, we haven't done that yet, so shh. It's freaking palm trees. I know, we're in SoCal, babe. My legs are shaking because when we're coming in, I don't know if we got any of this, but like when we're coming in, there's like a wall of fog and we went through it and you couldn't see shit. And then you had to you just line it up on, on your chart plotter and then go for it. And then when we got close enough, it was like a football field and a half wide and green light on, you know, green and red lights. But man, it, you uh, almost had to be right on top of it to see it. I wish you could see how cool this marina is, but leave it to us to wind up here at night, trying to dock the boat in a fancy marina we've never been to before, in the dark, just the two of us. It's gotta be this one up here. The one with the three lights in front of it. The little tiny bit port. Looks good. Nice and easy. I'm gonna jump. Good to kill it? Time. <laughs> well, dude, I think that we need to to make a toast to Drifter. Yeah. Us all the way down here. 
I'm like a champ, dude. Mm. Oh, it's a drifter. That's right, buddy. Thanks for getting us here. Yeah, thank you. All we did was hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's it for this week. Tune in next time as we do a little exploring. The path less traveled. I found a shortcut. You want anything from the cooler? Oh, yeah. These are my other headphones that I wear. What? You itched your butt. Pow, pow, pow! Right on your face. <laughs> then we have this just like blankety top ramen -y mess. I did sneak a couple of Uncrustables. Mmm, great. Enjoy the sunshine. What do you say? Yeah. Kelly's still feeling a bit puny. She won't look at me. Puny. Sorry about your hat, Shannon. It's good night, Joseph. Look, there's a Cloud City. That's where Lando Calrissian betrayed Harrison Ford. You know how some people can make their knees look like boobies? I, I would not have attractive booby knees. Colorful way of putting it, huh, Kel? Yeah, it is. Still got that adrenaline pumping? I do a little bit. I'm in uh, that docking. I definitely do. Day number one. Yeah. And you know, a docking, that'll, that'll like turn coal into diamonds. Yeah, that'll make or break you. <laughs>